I found myself in the situation of uh, chronic headaches forth and, and surgery was recommended to me. I spoke to a friend of mine who had recently studied heart and she offered to treat me and I traveled to her and she treated me and uh, and I couldn't believe my headaches just went and I ended up canceling my surgery, so on and so forth. Hi everyone, this is Eric Gimes. My guest today is a physical therapist from Ireland. She started her PRRT journey almost 20 years ago at a time when she was living less than 30 miles away from our headquarters in San Diego. Now back in Dublin and here to discuss her upcoming seminar. Tara O'Kelly, welcome. Hi Tara. Hi Eric, thank you. I was hoping you could give them a little bit more of a sense of your background and how you got started with PRRT. Sure, well, like you said, I'm a physiotherapist. Um, sorry about the honking in the background. Uh, physiotherapist, I, I, I studied and trained in Dublin. Um, my work and my life took me to the States um, a number of years ago. Uh, while I was there, um, uh, to put it as briefly as I can, um, unfortunately, in, in around uh, 2005 or six or thereabouts, I found myself in the situation of uh, chronic headaches. And after numerous uh, treatments and so on and so forth, and, and surgery was recommended to me. Um, but then I came across, I spoke to a friend of mine who had recently studied heart, and she offered to treat me and I traveled to her and she treated me and uh, and I couldn't believe my headaches just went and I ended up canceling my surgery, so on and so forth. And so it was at that point. Uh, and the interesting thing about it is, was the, the pathology, which was blocked sinuses, the pathology still existed, but the pain was gone. And um, so I ended up canceling my surgery and then I thought I have to study this myself. And I had just moved to San Diego and I said, I'm only down the road and I need to pursue this myself. Although I did travel to Colorado for my uh, mm -hmm. level one at the time. But then I was fortunate enough to be in the San Diego area and uh, and then train with uh, John for the next couple of levels. And also then um, because I was local as well, I had the privilege of assisting him in a lot of um, ongoing level twos and level threes over the years. I want to talk about the upcoming seminar but but first if you were to pretend that i'm uh, someone new to prt there's a lot of new new students that have just joined as part of our starter series um what would you say they would be missing out on if they they don't attend the upcoming seminar um there's nothing like hands-on learning and education mm -hmm. there's so many things that we can do um online and so on and so forth but but part is such a hands-on and it's so um uh, uh, like many of the skills that we learn as as physical therapists mm -hmm. but that one is just one in particular that i think is just so much easier and better and, and better learning to actually be in, be in an in-house and over the seminars i've done and there's lots of levels in part and it has been developed over the years and i know continues to be developed and so on some people are concerned well will i learn enough in level one will i learn enough in level two do i need to do everything and i just say to people no absolutely not you learn so many skills at level one and the other thing that i love about part from from day one and this is one of the things that i try to do as an instructor as well is teach people the concept mm -hmm. of part and once you know the concept uh it is so much easier to uh, we're all clinicians we're all used to dealing with people, hands on people, so on and so forth. And once you know the concept, it is just so, um, I won't say easy, but it's so applicable to, to put it either into the other techniques you're using or also just to, to, to figure it out yourself. And, um, and that's one of the things that I try to teach people so much. It's not so much the absolute techniques, which are fantastic, but you also learn the concept of what PERT is. And once you know that and you're a clinician and you've been doing this for years, you could actually go off and figure it out yourself, which is great. Right. Well said. Yeah. There, for those that, that haven't seen what's included, uh, it's two, two exams, there's 60 techniques. So, uh, you know, with the discussion we were having yesterday, this is a very unique opportunity because as of right now, this is the only combined course that's on our calendar. It's it's a ton of stuff to cover in three days, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It is a lot, the, but, uh, <laughs> but you get through it. And, and like I said, it's great practice and more people are there. And one of the things that I've enjoyed about doing seminars here in Europe is that there's so many people from so many different countries who come, you know, and it's just great shared experience. Uh, of people in different countries. One of the things I always loved about Kurt as well, you know, and and John is always great and gracious about, you know, chit-chatting about other things. People who come to these seminars typically are people who think a little bit outside the box and they often come with other great um, ideas or thoughts or techniques and so on, you know, and and it's just a great shared experience. And particularly with people from different countries, different cultures, different education backgrounds. Um, they're not all physical therapists, obviously. Do you know, we get osteopaths, chiropractors, and massage therapists, and so on. And um, and it's just a great learning experience for from people from other backgrounds and other cultures and other ways of of living, learning, practicing, all of that. Right. Speaking of of attendees from other countries, this is the, the first time I'm planning to be in attendance at the seminar. So that'll be fun to to I'm hoping that I can bring a bunch of others from the US to join us. But this is a really exciting time, Tara. The dates are September 13th, 14th and 15th, Dublin, Ireland. Do you have any final thoughts before we say goodbye and let them get on to the registration? I would just say it's a fantastic time. September is the best time to come to Ireland. Definitely. That's right. It can just, it can just be busy in um, in July and August. I always say May and September. May is almost over. Uh, when I lived in the United States, people used to ask me about coming to Ireland. And I always said September is the best time. So hopefully people came, traveled, learned for a few days and then go travel after that. Um, I would hope they'd have a great experience. So thank you, Tara, for joining us. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you in just a few months in Dublin. Thanks, Tara. Look forward to it. Thanks, Eric.